Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm going to be discussing AMD's Ryzen 3 and talking about what it is we know and what it is you can expect and why it's shaping up to be a remarkable release from the red team. So let's just jump straight into it with the two CPUs that we know about. Now there's two chips that we've been told about from AMD, the lower end 1200 and the higher end 1300. Now, pricing on these chips isn't confirmed by AMD in the slightest, uh, but previous rumours were slating this at $149 and $129 uh, for the respective CPUs. Uh, new rumours have come to light in recent days, however, that post uh, the CPUs at even lower prices of $129 and $109 respectively. Uh, now, whilst rumours aren't something you should depend upon, uh, these seem pretty uh, reliable, shall we say, and pretty convincing. Now, if you look at the lowest end Ryzen 5 CPU, you, that comes in at $169. For me, AMD pricing this highest end uh, Ryzen 3 CPU with 4 cores and 4 threads as opposed to the Ryzen 5 1400s, 4 cores and 8 threads for just $20 difference uh, isn't, isn't really something I imagine they do. You'd very much so obsolete that Ryzen 3 chip and a $129 price tag for a 4 core 4 thread chip seems very, very reasonable. It gets even more remarkable when you head down to that lower end 1200 CPU which is a quad-core CPU, uh, which is rumoured to come in at $109. The key thing to note there is that that undercuts every single one of Intel's current i3 KB Lake chips by quite some margin. Now, there are murmurs of these CPUs perhaps falling short in the single-threaded performance over the uh, Intel counterparts, as we perhaps saw with Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7. The 1200 chip coming in with a base of 3.1, a boost of 3.4, and then the 1300X CPU coming in with a base of 3.5 and a boost of 3.7. That 1300X chip, if it comes in for $129, the price that i3 uh, Kaby Lake chips tend to start around with a, a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz, and being a quad-core CPU could really play to AMD's advantage in a massive way. These CPUs, as with all Ryzen CPUs, are of course overclockable, which is huge. And now that AMD allow overclocking on lower end chipset boards, so the B350 alongside the X370 chipset motherboards, means that you could get some fantastic single core performance with overclocking on a budget CPU, which you never really thought you'd hear in the same sentence. Being able to overclock a budget CPU and actually get better performance than a higher end chip with a non overclockable motherboard really is something that goes against the Intel norm. A couple of other things that we know about these CPUs, we know that, that they're quad core, so they're going to boast compatibility for pretty much all of the latest titles. Uh, we also know that they aren't APUs, they don't have any graphics on board. I expect to see lower end Ryzen 3 chips, or maybe they'll dub them under the name, uh, their APU lineup, which is certainly going to be arriving later on this year. I believe it's quarter four, is what AMD announced a little while back. Now, these CPUs are certainly very exciting for both AMD and the more budget minded builder, rounding off their Ryzen lineup and giving options for pretty much every sector of the market, right from the enthusiast with Threadripper to the high end gamer and video editor uh, professional uh, workflow person, if you will, with the Ryzen 7, not in the mainstream audience with Ryzen 5, and now, of course, the more budget oriented build with Ryzen 3. These CPUs seem to be a great budget pairing that we haven't yet seen before for the likes of the 1050 card from Nvidia or the RX 560 definitely very exciting CPUs. It could also force Intel to react as well in the more long run picture and offer some quad core i3 CPUs, which in, in turn is going to be absolutely better for everybody. But at the minute, this looks very exciting and for that price, AMD once again doesn't look like it can be beaten. Will the CPU come to good fruition? Will uh, it be bought? Will it be adopted? Will people like it? And more importantly, will it take market share from Intel? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, do smash that like button and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Twitter at Geekawatt for behind the scenes news, reviews, shenanigans, all that good stuff. But as always, we'll see you in the next Geekawatt video.